Hi, this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com and in this video I'd like to show you how to work the Moroccan tile stitch in the round. Here I have the Moroccan Midnight Cowl, which is a recent pattern on mooglyblog.com. It's a free pattern and as you can see it's worked with two different yarns. Here on the back you can actually see the seam if you look very closely that runs up the back. Now I've already done a tutorial video and photo tutorial for this stitch when worked flat, but the join when you're working this in the round is a little different, so here's a new video for that. When you're working this stitch in the round, you're going to start with a multiple of three. It could be any multiple of three. Here I have a very small sample of 21. I've got some foundation single crochets here, but it could be worked into any stitch, again, just as long as it's a multiple of three. So to start, I have two options. I can either chain three, or I can work a chainless starting double crochet. I like to use the second option, but you should use whichever is more comfortable for you. So there's the chainless starting double crochet. Then I'm going to chain one, and then double crochet back in that first stitch that we joined to when we join to work in the circle. Now a double crochet, chain one, double crochet is a V stitch. So I'm going to make V stitches all the way around. In between each V stitch I'm going to skip two stitches. So one, two, then I'm going to work a V stitch in the next stitch. So that's a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. And there's two V stitches. Because it's a multiple of three, this sample of 21 will have seven V stitches in it. Let me make the rest and I'll see you when I come to the end of this round. Okay, so here I am at the end of this first round. There are two stitches left in the previous round, so I'm going to go ahead and skip those and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chainless starting double crochet or the top of the chain three. And that's it for the first round. Now what I'm going to do is pull up the loop a little bit here. I'm going to put a stitch marker in it, like so. And then I'm going to let that drop out of the way. Now I'm going to pick up the second color. Now again, you can join with a slip stitch and chain three if you prefer. I like to use the standing double crochet. I have tutorials for both the standing double crochet and the chainless starting double crochet on Moogly and on my YouTube channel. Now this first stitch, whichever way you make it, is worked into the top of the first V that you made in the previous round. So that's the one just to the left of the join. You're going to work another V stitch right into the chain space there, right in the center of that V. So let's get started. It's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, just as before, right into that chain one space. Then you're going to skip those double crochets and go to the next chain one space and work another V stitch. So these are just stacked right on top of the previous rows V stitches. All right, so you see, right on top. And I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, so I've come to the end of round two of the pattern here. As you can see, we once again have seven V stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, worked right into the tops of the previous V stitches. Now it's time to join to end this round. But before you can join this round, you need to do one more thing. The active loop and the working end of color A, first color you use, need to come to the front of your work. Then you can join to the top of the chain three or the top of the st standing double crochet in this case to finish off this round. There we go. So you just want to make sure those are in front before you do that so that they're in the right position to start the next round. Go ahead and take that stitch marker out and put it in the working loop of color B. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let that drop and reinsert my hook into color A. Now again, you can chain three or work a chainless standing double crochet. Excuse me, chainless starting double crochet. Chain one and then double crochet 
we're going to kind of hold the, the loop to the right and the working yarn to the left for color B. And this double crochet is going to go under right here, under the join, in between the two V stitches of round one, and closing both round one and round two, like so. And that's the first V stitch of round three. For the next one, again, we skip all this stuff, go to in between the V's of round one and round two here, and close them in your stitch, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. You can see what that's doing already is you've got that pop of color like you see in the cowl, all those little pops. The orange is going to be the one that pops here while the green makes the network in between. So we'll continue working our V stitches in between the V stitches of the previous rows and I will see you at the end of this round. Okay, so here we are at the end of round three, and you can see I've worked in between each of the V's of rounds one and two. Now it is time to go ahead and join to finish off. In this case, we're not gonna pull color B to the front. We're gonna go ahead and let those hang in the back while we join round three. All right. And that's the end of round three. We'll pull up that loop and switch over the stitch marker. The stitch marker just keeps that loop from pulling back out accidentally. On something little like this isn't so much of a worry, but if I were making something much larger, it would definitely be a concern. So how to start round four. What you're going to do is you can see the loop here is in the back. You're going to insert your hook right into the chain one space of the first V of the previous round, just like so. Then pick up that loop, snug it down a little bit, and pull it right through that V to the front of your work, like so. Now from there, you're going to go ahead and start working round four. Now you might remember when we did round two, which was the previous round with the orange color, or color B, what we did was worked our V stitches right in the tops of the previous round's V's. That's basically what we're going to do again. I've double crocheted chain one, and I'm gonna work the double crochet back into that same chain one space. To, oops, forgot to yarn over there. There we go, back into that same chain one space to make our first V stitch. There we go, of the fourth round. So there's one. Skip all that to the, go to the next V stitch of the previous round and work another V stitch. So these are stacked right on top of the previous round just as before. The only difference is we have to go into that first V stitch to pick up the loop and pull it forward. So I'll see you at the end of round four. So now we're at the round end of round four and again we have seven V's worked right into the top of the V's of the previous round, right into that chain one space not into the chain ones, into the chain one space. So, since we're working a color B, we need to make sure that the loop and the working yarn from color A are brought to the front before we join. So again, right to the top of the chain three or the chainless starting double crochet, standing double crochet, excuse me. I always get those mixed up. There we go, and that's the end of round four. So basically, to continue the pattern, you're just going to repeat rounds three and four all the way to the end. And then eventually, you get something that looks like this. And that's all there is to working the Moroccan tile stitch in the round. Thanks for watching.